this is the ultimate beginner's guide to Cree AI automations. And it's fitting because I'm sure your news feeds have been flooded with GPT-5, which means that we are also gonna be using GPT-5 with our automation. And we're gonna go ahead and get started with what we're creating today. Now, when we begin the Cree flow, we always have an entry point. So this is the start of the flow. And that's where we're gonna ask a user a topic that we wanna discuss, and then the audience level, whether it's gonna be beginner, intermediate, or advanced. And the reason is because we're gonna be building a comprehensive guide on whatever the topic is and whatever they choose choose to speak about. So the first step is we're going to validate the input. So the topic and whatever, if it should be a beginner or an advanced guide. And then based on that, we're going to do some web research using Firecrawl to retrieve certain information about that. Then we're going to go to step three, pass all that in. We're going to create the guide outline. And then this is going to be done through a simple LLM call. So I'll show you how to do that. You don't always need a crew or you don't need to build out a lot of things. This can just be a simple call to an LLM. Then we're going to take all of the guide outlines. We're going to write and compile them together using a crew. So we're going to create a crew and they're going to work together to actually create the guide. And then we're going to save that into the output. And then over here, you see how the state management, that's because throughout all of the steps with a crew AI flow, they handle the state of anything. So we're going to be saving a lot of information throughout the duration of this flow. And with that said, we're going to begin with step one, and that's installing crew AI and creating our flow. So in order to install it, we're just going to copy and paste this. So we're going to say UV tool install crew AI. What this is going to do is this is I already have installed, but this is now going to allow us to create the crew from anywhere when we create a new project. OK, so now what I can do is I can say crew AI. This is now a command that we have that we can use on our computer. So crew AI create and then flow, and then we can name this whatever we want. We can say guide crew, okay? Because we're gonna be creating a guide. So whenever I do this, it just takes a minute. You can see, as you're gonna see here, that's gonna create a full project for us. Okay, so it created it, it did it successfully. So over here on the left-hand side, the guide crew, we have our source folder with a standard poem crew. We have our tests and we have our main file that I'm about to go over that has our state management and our flow. Now, the first thing I want you to do is come over to this, one of the files is pyproject.toml. Okay, in the dependencies here, we need to add one more because we're gonna be using Firecrawl. I want you to type in here, firecrawl-py. Okay, and we don't have to do this just yet, but whenever we get there, this will need to go ahead and install this for us. Okay, now going on to step two, we need to get our open AI key, and then we're gonna go ahead and run the default crew flow just so you can see how it works. In the .env file here, where we have the open AI key, you're just gonna go ahead, come in here and paste your API key. Okay, now I am inside of the guide crew. So I'm just going to go ahead and say crew AI install. This is going to create the dependencies based off of this pyproject.toml file. It's creating the .vnv and it's already done. You can see that right up here, the virtual environment. So then we just go ahead and run this. So because it's a flow, we're gonna say crew AI flow kickoff. Okay, and then this is going to go ahead and run the whole flow. And we're just gonna see what we, the basic poem crew or the poem flow with state management working. Okay, this was very simple, but we the flow finished for the poem flow. And you can see there were three total steps here that it went through in the automation to create it. Now we're gonna get ready to modify this for our guide outline, but we need to know just a couple things first. So this is on step three, understanding the annotations. So here we have in the poem flow, you can see we have a place where we want to start. And then we have these listeners. These are all just Python functions. And then we use AI as part of that, but we can denote where we start by the at start. And then we just have this Python function function to generate a sentence count. So this generates a random sentence count. But the important thing here, you see it says self dot state dot sentence count. Well, you see up here, we have a class called poem state and it has a sentence count. This means that whatever the, this random number is between one and five, it's going to save it to this variable up here. And during the whole duration of the flow, we can use this sentence count. Okay. So that's the first step is listening for whenever this Python function generate sentence count is finished, then we're going to run this. And so what we have in here is a poem crew of agents. So if I were to come in here, you can see that we have a poem writer agent and then a single task called write poem. And then they have their own background stories and everything that they need to execute in order to make this task work. Then when they're done, it'll say poem generated. It's going to save self.state.poem equals the result from that crew. So up here, the poem property here for that state, it's going to save it here. So self.state.poem, this will have the actual poem that it created. 
And then finally, we're going to save that poem because we have this at listen that's listening for when the generate the generate poem function is complete. And then it writes that, and then it's going to write that here, poem.txt, just like it did. And then here's the actual poem if we wanted to look at it. All right, so now we're going to be getting on the next part. We're going to be modifying this heavily for our guide outline. We're not going to code everything because this would be a much longer video if I coded everything out and explained it. That's reserved for something else. So I'm going to have some code already pasted here. We're going to understand what they are step by step. All right, now we're moving on to step four, and this is understanding our guide creator flow. Okay, so we have a guide creation now that we had created, now, and this is all the code that you're going to be using, but let's go over what this is. So what do we modify? Well, first off, we have a different state, right? Does, the name doesn't matter. What matters is the name that you put in here. So where it says class guide creator flow, we just want to change that state here. And then I have multiple properties inside of the state. Now I have some in here that I have importing from a models. So I have a guides.py. Here are what we're going to be saving, right? So I have a guide outline that has a title, introduction, the target audience, sections, and the conclusion. And then the sections, each section is going to have a title and description because we're going to have multiple sections. And then here I'm saving everything we do from our web research. Okay, so all of that is going to be saved throughout the flow into the state. So the first thing is we are going to be setting all the user inputs. So before this, we're going to ask the user, what topic do you want to talk about? For instance, GPT-5 and all the use cases you can get from that. And you want this to be a beginner, intermediate or advanced guide on that. Then after that's done, we're going to perform web research. And this is going to be using Firecrawl. Now, just quickly, I'll have a video at the end or in the description where I have a full Firecrawl course. It's almost an hour long to help you understand everything you need to know. And all the code is given to you in a repository about Firecrawl. But what this code does is we create the Firecrawl application and then we say search based on the topic. So we already are going to be saving that topic as state. And then we want to know about whatever that topic is from the last week. Then we want to return, get the markdown and the links from that. And then I'm just going to be saving that, all of that information into the web search state. So back up here, web research state. We're going to be saving all information here to be used for the guide outline. Okay, then the next part that we had in our steps was we want to now create the guide outline. Okay, so now we're going to create the structured guideline. And how we're going to do this is it's going to be through an LLM call. So we say LLM equals, and then we're going to give the model and then how we want it returned back to us. We want it in a certain state called guide outline. And so we want specific things uh, whenever it creates all this, we want to be in a specific structured output. That's what we're doing here with the guide outline. And again, we're using a brand new model. We're going, see, we're going to see how it works. And then with this, we just need the messages. So this basically means what the system and the user prompts, right? This is basically what we're giving it. Then we can just say response equals LLM dot call passing those messages. And then we're just going to get that response back. We're going to create a directory and we're just going to have that out, out guide outline JSON file there. So now we have the whole guide outline and the crew will take that information and create it for us. And again, we're saving that guide outline into the state called guide outline, which is at the top here, guide outline. Now we're moving on to step four of the flow. We at the inputs, we did the web research, we created the guide outline. Now we need to write and compile the guide. So this means for each section that we had created, now we need to go in there for each section. We're going to have a crew of agents fill out that section. But first, we need to create the crew. Now I already have it created, but let me show you how to do this. So I'm going to bring it back up the terminal. How you do that is you're going to say create AI flow add crew and I already have a content crew. So let's just call this example crew. And what I want you to notice over here on the left hand side, we have a content crew and the poem crew. So whenever I press enter, it's going to create another folder with the structure of everything we need for that crew. And it tells you right here. So here I have the example crew, the example crew uh, PY file, and I had the configuration. So I have all the agents, I have the role, the goal, and the backstory for each agent and the task that came that came with it with the configuration as well and for which agent is going to be taking care of that task. Now, if you're feeling a little bit overwhelmed, I have a full two hour course on Kui AI that you can watch. I'll have that in the description below. If you have any comments or any suggestions about this, please leave them in the comments as well. But I have a full course for you if you need help. OK, so we had created the crew and then I modified it. So if we go into the crew, we don't need to spend much time here. 
but you can see here we have a content writer and then a content reviewer. So the content writer has the write section task and then the reviewer has a review section task. And we modify the config configuration for each agent in their task. And this is just to make sure that everything that we're doing is like structured and we want them to take all the information, but then we want to give them some parameters on how we want these when each section of these guides done. Okay, and then for each section, it's gonna save it into the state. It's going to basically put them all together and it's going to then create this guide outline. So this complete guide, which means for step number five, we need to actually run this as an example and go through what happened. So we had this kickoff function that we did in the terminal. This is the kickoff function that is going to execute. Okay, so here just some Python code that we asked the person what topic do they want and we're in this while loop so that you have to choose either beginner, intermediate, or advanced. Like who is your target audience for this? Then we have these inputs for the topic and audience level. And then we say guide creator flow dot kickoff. So that we give them these inputs. Now a quick tip, this is actually a more advanced way of doing this, but I just wanted it, it made a little more sense and the terminal doesn't look, look right if it's not done this way. But if we come back up here, Whenever we start the flow and we have those because they were as inputs, it's automatically going to add those here as a topic and audience level. Let's go ahead and run this again. It's just say it's just crew AI flow kickoff. Okay. So what topic would you like to do for it? How about we just do use cases for GPT five and let's do beginner. Okay, so this basically means that it now it's going to do all the web research about GPT-5 use cases. So here are the topic, we have the uh, the audience level. So now it already performed the web research. See, it completed that right here. So that's already done. That was very quick. It is really quick. Firecall makes that uh, does that really well. So then the next task is it wants to create the guide outline. So then this is going to take a little bit longer. Okay, so it created the guide outline and in the output, you know, it created, it was going to create a JSON file for us. So here, here are some, you can see the title and just, it created the title and descriptions. So then basically for each of these sections, we're going to have that cr content crew e come into each of these and create and fill out and create that actual section for us as the guide. And that's what it's doing right now. So we're going to uh, execute with the crew, the running, the write and compile guide. So we can see now we have a crew, we have the educational content writer, that is the name of the agent. And then it's going to write a comprehensive section on the first case, which was writing and content creation. So it's going to come in here. It's going to do it for all of the sections. Okay. So it, it took a little bit longer. So I just went ahead and let it run, but basically it went through like six different sections, it had the content writer and then the review reviewer for each of those. And then finally down here at the end, it completed. So the crew execution completed for the last top for the last section, and then the flow finally finished. So then the write and compile guide was done and all the steps were complete. Now we seem to see what this looks like. So over here in the output and left hand side, we have the complete guide dot markdown. And this doesn't look like much, but so what we can do is there's an extension I have where you can preview the markdown in a better, in a better way. So let me bring this over here. Bring that away. Okay. So then this is kind of what the markdown would look like. It has the different sections for GPT five, uh, things like different use cases. Plus it's going over improvements for it as well, but this is a relatively big document, but I've done this for like how to create fast API, how to create N eight N like uh, or looking up best N eight N use cases, how to create them or the best practices. So, like you can have guides for anything. Here's about having agentic task and automation, let GPT five do more for you. And then what I've done is whenever you highlight coding things on here, like what you can do for coding, this guide just really helps out. And it can, it can just be really amazing to have something create this for you. So now you can have automation. If you need a guide for a certain topic, whether it's you're teaching it, you know, potentially selling it, or maybe as a cheat sheet for something that you're making, whatever that may be. But GPT five did a very good job. I already kind of reviewed this and this is, this is pretty good. You'll have this in GitHub whenever you go to download this. 
I have a link for the, all the code in my GitHub. It'll be under AI here. I have already have 850 stars on this. This has a lot. This right here, this AI one has a lot of things, a lot of projects already in here for you. And just as a heads up, this will be in my tutorial section for you already ready to go with the exact instructions that you need to set this up as well. So look, guys, thank you for watching AI automation. And if you're creating AI agents as part of those things, it takes a little time. Don't worry about how it gets there. The tools are agnostic, right? To solve the problem is you want to have the solution. So that solution doesn't matter what tool you use to get there. I, I am a developer, so I like programming. And I personally think you can scale and do a lot of different things other than just actually creating the automation. There are other things in the background you need to worry about. And you can do more with that with coding. But whatever it, however you're doing it, you can get it done. Just worry about what problem that you want to solve. Again, join my school community. I have a free trial right now that you can use to join. I'm here to help everybody. And if you need something done for you, have a discovery call with me in the description below and I will get it done for you. Thank you for watching. Here are some more videos for you to watch. In the meantime, I will see you next video.